So if you're also a calculus teacher, then I'm pretty sure that you'll also experience the following. And that is, whenever you're trying to teach the definition of the derivative, let's say we're trying to find the derivative of sine x by using the definition, you know, there's always going to be some students in the back yelling out the answer, cosine x, because they know it already. However, when you ask them why, they wouldn't be able to explain. They just don't want to do the definition of the derivative. And I think the best way to make the students learn the definition of the derivative is by forcing them. So today, I would like to show you guys a classic example that you really have to use the definition of the derivative in order to find the derivative. Okay, this is a very classic question. Every calculus teacher and student should know. Here we have the function f of x is defined to be x squared times sine of 1 over x if x is not equal to 0. And if x is equal to 0, then we get 0. And our goal is to find f prime of 0. First off, I would like to just tell you f is indeed contiguous at 0. You can go ahead and check that out later on your own. Now let's just focus on the derivative. First, you might be wondering, why can't we just take the derivative? Maybe we just have to use the product rule and also the chain rule. Well, let me show you. If you focus on this right here, that only works for x is not equal to 0. So I would have to say, for x is not equal to 0, then we look at f prime of x. Okay, use the product rule. We keep the first function, which is x squared times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of 1 over x. And don't forget the chain rule. Multiply by the derivative 1 of x, which is negative 1 over x squared. And then we add the second function, then that's sine of 1 over x times the derivative of the first, and that will give us 2x. And now this and that cancel, so we see that f prime of x is just negative cosine of 1 over x plus 2x sine of 1 over x. It looks pretty cool, right? But here's the thing. Right here, x is not equal to 0. I cannot plug in 0 in here, all right? In fact, like, it's not defining either. And we do have the second piece. When x is equal to 0, we get 0. But that's just a point. You cannot really just differentiate that and say the answer is 0. I know the answer to this question is 0, but no, we cannot just do that. Well, let's take a look right here and I'll show you guys this. If we take the limit as x approaching 0 of this expression, negative cosine of 1 over x plus 2x times sine of 1 over x. I will tell you though, this right here will give us 0. You will see that later on. We will have to use the squeeze theorem to prove that. And we will do that. So just kind of wait for it. But here is the part that will give us the trouble. Here, when we put 0 in here, this is cosine of 1 over 0. It's like infinity. And this right here just means that this is going to give us you know, in between negative 1 and 1, oscillating forever. So the limit of the derivative when x is approaching 0 doesn't exist. So does that mean this doesn't exist? No, it's really weird. Now, now let's go ahead and just check this out. To get f prime of 0, well, as I mentioned it, We'll be using the definition of the derivative. And let me just take a look right here. Ah, I'll use this one, the first one. All right, this right here, I will say this is the limit as x approaching 0. And then we have f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0. Keep in mind, x is approaching 0. f of x is that because when we have x is approaching 0, we don't care about x is exactly at 0. So this is limit as x approaching 0. This right here is just x squared times sine of 1 over x. And this right here, by this, we get 0. So we don't need to write that down. And then on the bottom, we have x. Well, cancel, cancel. So we are just going to observe the limit as x approaching 0 of x times sine of 1 over x, which is a similar thing right here. And now I will give you guys the detail. Unfortunately, we cannot just plug in 0 into here and here. It does look that we have 0 times sine of 1 over 0, this right here. Again, it's like sine of infinity, it's d and e. 
But you cannot just say zero times dn is zero. No, don't do that. That's bad. Whenever this kind of things happen, sine cosine, we will use the squeeze zero for this kind of situation. Let me show you how to write that down. First, we can say sine of any angle. I'll just put on theta for this. This is in between of negative one and one. So when we put one of x into the angle here, we can say sine of one over x. This right here must also be in between of negative one and one. Now I want to have the x. Let's just multiply everybody by x. So we can say negative x. And right here, I will have x. This right here, we will have x times sine of one over x in the middle. And this must be in between of this and that. At the end, let's go ahead and take the limit. I will just write down as x approaching zero, this we can do is just zero. Now we can also do it's also just zero. In the middle, I will write down the limit as x approaching zero of x times sine of one over x. This is what we're trying to find. And we know that this right here has to be in between of this zero and also that zero. Of course, the answer to this will be what? It has to be equal to zero. And when you do this, this right here, it's the squeeze zero. So let me write this down. And some other books, let me also call this the sandwich theorem. That, yeah, you just pick your favorite name for this. So as we can see, f prime of zero is just equal to zero. And let me just write that down for you guys. Ta -da! That's it. Yes, all the work right here for zero. The value of f prime of zero, we do have a value of zero, but if you take the limit when x is approaching zero of f prime of x, it doesn't exist. Cool, huh? So if you like today's video, then you must really like calculus. And as a calculus teacher, a lot of people have asked me where they can go learn calculus on their own. To that, I will always recommend them to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.Work. Brilliant is a fun educational website and app, and I like Brilliant because they really focus on interactive learning. They offer tons of courses in math, science, and computer science. And this is from their Calculus and National course. This course uses visual and physical intuition to present the major topics of calculus, which are limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. You will really understand what calculus is and what it can do after you finish the course. Learning from Brilliant is really fun because they are interactive lessons. You will be engaged by their storytelling and beautiful animations in each lesson. And now if you use the link in the description, Brilliant.org slash black and repent, then you can get 20% of discount. And they also offer a 30-day free trial. So go ahead and check them out. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I also want to thank you guys for checking them out.